Most people think stepping on the bathroom scale tells them the truth about their health, but it doesn't. Weight alone can't tell you if you're gaining muscle, losing fat, or staying the same. That's where fitness trackers come in. Wearables track steps, heart rate, and sleep. But what about your actual body composition? I'm Dr. Tammy Penhollow, a spine and joint care specialist at Precision Regenerative Medicine. Today, I'm breaking down the Hume Body Pod a next generation tracker that combines scale and handle inputs for deeper insights. We'll compare it to wearables and in-office tools like InBody, talk about pitfalls, and show you how tracking can actually extend your health span. So I know we've all grown up with the whole issue of you make sure you get up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you dress down before the shower, and you hop on the scale before you've eaten, and that consistency, same time of day, maybe once a week every Monday, whatever, is the issue. But unfortunately, that is just a number. The scale is just a number. It's not enough to track your weight alone. It only shows mass. It does not show body composition, but body composition itself is a predictor of health span. For example, a higher lean muscle mass is linked to longer lifespan and lower disability risk. When we lose muscle sarcopenia, that is a predictor of frailty and falls. When you fall, you break things like your bones, like your humerus, like your femur, like your hip, and that can start a whole cascade of ugliness. Remember, we've talked about grip strength. We've talked about sit to stand studies and the whole issue with building muscle, maintaining muscle is critical. So let's break it down. What kind of trackers do we have available? Well, there's your regular old bathroom scale. It gives weight. It doesn't break it down into what kind of weight, like the bones, the muscles, the water, the fat. It can actually be pretty darn misleading if you might gain muscle but lose fat, the number may go up and that may make you think, oh my gosh, I'm actually gaining weight. What am I doing wrong? Not so when you do other forms of more accurate wearables, watches, we've got the Garmin, we've got the Apple, we've got the Fitbit. All these things can track things like heart rate, like heart rate variability, like sleep. It doesn't measure the muscle or the fat directly. So these can be nice adjuncts. And some of these scales have little things like the Hume strap can go with the Hume scale and that can have them all in one platform. Otherwise, if you have something like an Apple Watch and you do the Apple Fit Tracker, your Hume and your Apple Watch can combine and you can have the best of all those worlds. But again, these trackers don't talk about your body composition. Then there are more office-based systems. You may have heard of InBody. You may have heard of DEXA. DEXA has been known as the gold standard in accuracy, and you need to find the right kind of DEXA. So the DEXA that I requested, I went to a major imaging facility and I specifically paid out of pocket for body composition, hoping that I get truncal fat, truncal muscle, each arm and leg muscle, all these different things, break it down into water, into fat, into muscle. It didn't do it. It was you are this many pounds of muscle, this many pounds of fat, period. Wanted more information than that and thought I was going to get more information than that. So I actually got my money back. So DEX is supposedly the gold standard. When you have stand on the in body, which many offices have, that is 99% as accurate as DEXA. So that's not bad. However, they are very costly. For an office to have, they are very costly. Often they'll charge their members, either it's within their concierge fee or per time to get on that scale. And you can't just hop on it every day in your own home. Then we can talk about the Hume Body Pod, which is a hybrid home tool, but you can also use it for the office. It is as accurate as the office-based scales. Well, it's 98% of DEXA versus the in-body's 99% of DEXA. That's not bad. As long as we have something consistent, as long as we have, you're comparing your apple to your apple, you're on this same scale, you're on that same in-body, etc. So that is really nice. It combines a scale plus bioelectrical impedance with the handles that you hold on to. You can track muscle mass, fat percentage, hydration, segmental analysis, the left arm, the right arm, the left and right legs, the trunk in terms of pounds of muscle and pounds of fat in each. 
and it also gives you an overall score. It says whether you are ultra low, low, normal, high, or super high with regard to the percentage body fat or muscle and all these things. It's over 40 parameters. And what I love about it is it can bridge that gap between the daily convenience, you can hop on your scale your, and hold the handles versus the every X number of months that you go into the office or the however many times a year that you go in for a DEXA scan. Let's say, why do we even want to track this stuff? I mean, you're overwhelmed by all these numbers anyway. What 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 am I going to do with all this information, for example? Well, it goes to your phone and you can track it on an app and you can just kind of see how things are going. You can recognize that when you're during your menstrual cycle, for example, you know that you have retained water and that's going to change the numbers, but you know that it's that time of the month and you can expect that. Or you can recognize, ooh, I just ate a really salty, heavy carb meal. That's why I'm seeing these reflections on this that is not only showing that the pounds changed on the scale, but the water composition and the mineral composition changed. So it's a little bit more information. What are the implications for health span and lifespan when we do these trackings? Why? Why would you even want to take this extra step? Muscle. Think of it as metabolic currency. Think of it as really your body's money. You can link lean mass to insulin sensitivity, link lean mass to bone health and to mobility. And when we track, we tend to change our behavior. That's just the psychology of humans. People using trackers have increased adherence to exercise programs. Meta-analysis data shows by 30 to 40%. That's big. When we can make small changes that motivate us and know I'm going to be watching this every morning and it tells me how my sleep has been. Or I'm going to be stepping on this scale every morning and seeing what the parameters are based on my activities of the weekend or of the day before. It helps. And this is all over time. We want to detect a trend. Remember, one little blip on the radar that's way up here, that's an outlier. That's a data point that is not really important. But a trend over time, consistency, tracking helps identify subtle changes. For example, I've had this shoulder surgery. I can see that the right arm muscle mass is different than the left arm muscle mass. It just shows it. And I can track that over time as I'm in physical therapy and start rebuilding this muscle. This muscle mass on this side is above average. This one is below average. This one's fat composition is average. This is below average average because there's more muscle. I've lost muscle and therefore the fat percentage is more in that average. I'd rather they be equal and that's my goal and that's what helps me with time and trend get back to where I was prior to the surgery. So what are some pitfalls? Right? We want to know timing matters. You want to get on this scale at the same time of day, ideally in the morning, after you go to the bathroom and before you eat minimal or the same clothing for accuracy. You're not going to be in your super heavy jammies for one morning and you're in a tank top and, and underwear for the other morning. Do the same thing. Hydration. These readings vary tremendously with fluid status. So you can track that and it'll tell you that you're 61% hydrated or 58% hydrated or whatever that is. And you can just think back to the day before, did I really pound the fluids like I was supposed to? And remember, these numbers are just a tool. They're not the final truth. They're not a diagnosis. So how to incorporate a tracker? You can use at home. You can use things like your fitness trackers that are wearables. You can use this scale with the impedance, motivational tool, frequent monitoring. You can go into the office for that in-body or the DEXA, get a baseline, maybe get a deep analysis every three to six months, knowing that the cost is going to potentially be a recurring cost versus a one-time cost. The wearables fill in that activity side. They fill in that sleep side of the picture. And all together, these create a 360 degree view of health and performance. So again, Pair data with fitness and nutrition programs. Share data with your clinicians for deeper insight. Use trends, not single numbers, to make the decisions and measure at the same time under the same baseline conditions. Tracking tools are not about obsession. They're about precision in your health journey. 
Hume offers a bridge between that daily convenience and the clinical insight. And at 98% accuracy compared to DEXA, I think it's worth it. So if you're serious about building strength, aging well, and avoiding the pitfalls of weight only tracking, this Hume Body Pod might be your next tool. If you like what you've seen, please hit like, subscribe, and share this video with somebody who you might think needs it. Thank you. If you have knee pain and would like to learn more, I have a worksheet called five things to do now to reduce your knee pain within a week. Go to www.kneeboostnow.com to download it for free. I'd love to hear from you. So please like subscribe and comment below so I can help you get out of your knee pain.